Hello everyone, my name is Alex from IVA Academy, and today we're going to talk about the new digital SAT from the College Board. As you guys probably already know, College Board is releasing a new SAT called the Digital SAT that is going to roll out starting next year, 2023. With this new announcement, everyone is freaking out about the new SAT. So today we're going to break down everything that College Board has already announced for the new SAT as well as some other information that the College Board hasn't released yet. We have a lot to talk about today, so without further ado, let's get started. First, we're going to talk about the starting dates for the new Digital SAT. This new Digital SAT is going to start rolling out next year, 2023, in the spring semester. More specifically, it's going to happen in the March SAT exam. However, this exam is only available to international students who don't live inside the U.S. College Board said that the first group of students who will be taking this test will be the students who are currently in 10th grade, which is the class of 2024. If you're currently in 11th grade studying abroad, by the time Digital SAT rolls out next year in the spring semester, it will already be March of your senior year and that would probably be too late for your college application. One thing to note here is that there is no set year that you can take the SAT. So technically, if you're currently an international 9th grade student and you really want to take the old SAT, the current SAT, of course, you can do that too. However, if you feel like you want a little bit more time to prepare for the SAT, then you can wait until the digital SAT comes out next year in the spring semester and then you can take the SAT at that time. And next year, in 2023, there will be 7 test dates in total for these international students to take the new digital SAT. Starting in the fall semester of 2023, all students, domestic or international students, will be taking the new digital PSAT. So that means starting with the current 9th graders, who are class of 2025, you guys will be taking the new digital PSAT next year. And then in 2024 spring semester, Likely in March, but the College Board has not announced the exact month yet, students in the U.S. will be taking the new digital SAT. That means the current 9th graders, which are the students from class of 2025, will be the first students in the U.S. taking the new digital SAT. So how exactly is the SAT changing? Let's first talk about how the SAT is not changing and what is staying the same. First of all, the total score for the SAT will remain the same. That means the total score for the new digital SAT will also be out of 1600. Next, College Board is going to use the same scale conversion for the new and the old SAT. What that means is, if you're currently getting a 1300 on the SAT right now, that will be equal to a 1300 on the new digital SAT. So whatever you get on the current test will be the score for the new test, and vice versa. In addition, even though College Board hasn't announced yet, we're speculating that College Board will still use SuperScore. For those of you who don't know what SuperScore is, it basically means adding up your highest English score ever with your highest math score ever, and when you add the two scores up, that will be your SAT score. Next, the testing site for the new digital SAT will still be the same. As in, for the new SAT, you are still going to take the test at a test center or in your school. College Board announced specifically that it is not offering an at-home version for the digital SAT like it did with the AP exam during the pandemic. It's also not like TOEFL where there is an at-home version for the TOEFL exam. The subjects that will be tested on the new SAT will still be the same with reading, grammar, and math. The answer format for the new digital SAT will be the same as the current SAT as students are still putting in multiple choice or grid in answers. And lastly, the purpose of the SAT is still the same. You can use your SAT score on your college application to show college your college readiness. And this applies to all the schools that accept the SAT score, whether the score is necessary or optional to the schools. Next, let's talk about what's changing on the new digital SAT. First and foremost, the device that you'll be using for the test will be different. Instead of taking the test on pen and paper, the new test will be distributed completely on laptop or tablet. For the exam, you can bring your own device to the test center or school, 
or you can borrow one from the test center. This is a very smart move by the college board by the way, because otherwise test centers will need to prepare hundreds or even thousands of laptops or tablets for the students. And by having students bring in their laptop or tablet, this alleviates a lot of stress on the test centers. In addition, I'm pretty sure most students will appreciate being able to bring your own device to the test, as students are probably most familiar with using their own device, and they wouldn't want to underperform on the test just because they're not familiar with the new laptop or tablet that the test center offers to the students. The second big change to the new SAT is that instead of the three hour test, the new test will take just two hours. I'm pretty sure all students will appreciate the shortened time for the new SAT. In addition, by offering the test digitally, this allows much faster administrative work from the SAT proctors as there are no papers to hand out or collect, reducing chaos at the beginning and the end of the test, and giving students a smoother test experience overall. Even though College Board has not announced a test time for the new digital SAT, here I'm taking a very wild guess and speculate that the new test can be administered at different times in the day. I feel this is possible on the new SAT so that the devices at test centers could be shared among different students coming in to take the test at different times. And since now the test is delivered completely on the laptop or tablet, students don't need to all start the test at the same time anymore. However, this is just a complete wild guess and we'll find out the answer when the College Board makes announcement in the future. The third big change to the new SAT is score availability. Instead of waiting weeks for the scores to come out, now the digital SAT scores will come out in days. And this is great news for the students and schools because not only do students want to get their scores back quicker, they can also send their scores to colleges quicker and that means colleges can get students SAT scores in time to make the decisions. Next, on the current SAT, students are not allowed to use the calculator on one of the math sections. However, on the new SAT, students can use a calculator for the entirety of the math section. In addition, to accommodate students who don't have a calculator, there will be an on-screen calculator available to use. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later too. The fifth big change that College Board announces is score report. And we feel like this is relevant to most of the students, but we'll still mention it anyway because College Board mentioned it. For the new SAT, students can send their SAT scores to workforce training and two-year college programs. Two-year college programs are typically associate degrees, or AB degrees, as opposed to a bachelor degree, which is what you would get in a four-year college program. The last change that College Board announces, and this is one of the biggest announcements for the new SAT, is that each test will have different test versions. In the past, all students take the test on the same form. However, starting with a digital SAT, there is a unique test form for each of the students. What that means is that it will be very hard, if not impossible, for students to cheat on the new SAT, as your test is different from the neighbors around you. And since it's much harder to cheat, this also reduces the chances of test cancellation in the future. Having tests canceled was a huge issue over the past two years because College Board believed that some students were cheated at certain test sites and as a result, many or all students who took the test on that site had their scores canceled afterwards. Now with the new change, College Board can finally reduce the chances of test cancellation. In addition to these six points, we also found out many, many other changes that's coming to the new SAT. And the next is pacing. In the past, all students in the same classroom will have the same pace of the test. They will all start at the same time and end at the same time according to the proctor. However, for the new SAT, all students have their own timer on their laptop or tablet, and students will proceed on the SAT test according to their own timer. What that means is, all students entering the test center at the same time will start and finish the test at different times. Next. The test structure for the new digital SAT is different from the current SAT. Currently, there are four sections for the SAT. There's reading, grammar, and two math sections. But for the new SAT, there are only two sections, first of which is called the reading and writing section, which really is just the English section. After a short break, the student will enter the second section, which is the math section. 
For the new SAT, reading passages will be shortened into shorter passages. On the current SAT, one passage could be 70, 80, 90 lines long. We don't know exactly how short these new passages will be, but for sure, these new passages will be significantly shorter than the current SAT. The subjects of the new reading passages will also be very different. College Board says that the passages for the new SAT will come from a broader range college level text. And that means it will cover different topics and not just your traditional literature, history, and sciences. For the math section on the digital SAT, it will cover a broader array of topics. Even though College Board has not announced what topics will be on the new SAT, we're speculating that the new SAT will include topics from pre calculus and not just algebra and geometry. In the current SAT, the bubble sheet for fill in responses has four places for students to put in numbers or symbols. For the digital SAT, however, there are five to six places to put in numbers or symbols. If the answer is a positive answer, you can put in up to five digits or symbols. And on the other hand, if it's a negative answer, you can put in up to six digits or symbols, the first one of which is the negative sign. And lastly, timing will be different for the new SAT. According to quotes from students who took the digital SAT in a pilot program, one student reported that the digital SAT is less strenuous and the timing was less of an issue. We don't know whether that's true yet, but we will see when College Board releases new test questions, and we'll keep you guys all updated about this. Next, let's talk about the testing site for the new digital SAT. As we mentioned before, you can take the new digital SAT in school or a test center. There will be no at home version for you to take the test at home in your bedroom. You're allowed and probably recommended to bring your own laptop or tablet to the test center. However, if you don't want to, or if you don't have a device, you can also borrow one from the test center. We don't know what the process of borrowing a device is, but we're guessing that you have to apply for a device for free when you're signing up for the test. Just in case everyone shows up to the test center without a laptop, and the test center may not have that many devices for everyone to use on the spot. Next, College Board is proud of its new flexible and adaptive test taking app. It says that you should have a seamless experience taking the test, and you will be unaffected if your internet is disconnected, your device freezes, or your computer runs out of battery during the test. So that tells us that you need internet to do the test, but if there's an interruption along the way, you can continue without any kind of interruption. If something happened to your computer, or if your computer runs out of battery in the middle of a section, you can just get your computer back on, reconnect, and continue. And the good news here is that the progress and time are saved, so you do not need to start over again. I'm pretty sure all students will appreciate this feature. Not only do you not need to start over again, you can continue where you left off without losing a second of your test time. Next, let's talk about the testing application. What you see here on the right is the new testing application from College Board for you to do the new digital SAT test. And you can install this app right onto your laptop or tablet. Based on the description, it seems like when you're taking the real test, this app will lock your computer screen in full screen mode so that you can focus and so that you won't cheat during the test. You can also use this app for your own practices. At some point this year, College Board will release the digital exam application to the Play Store and App Store for students to download. As we mentioned earlier, students' testing experience will not be affected by technical issues. According to the students on the pilot program, they said that they had a very good testing experience because it was, quote, easy to work on the computer and the digital SAT was really efficient. This is very subjective. Whether that's true, whether that applies to you, you will be the judge on it when you use this app one day. Next, let's talk about the different tools in the app that you can use during the test. College Board says that there are many built in tools available to use during the test. And first and foremost is the testing timer at the top of the screen. College Board says that if you don't want the timer to be there, there's an option for you to hide this timer. However, I don't know why you would ever want to hide this timer. Maybe you'll want to hide it because it can be distracting or it can be stressful to see the numbers counting down. But personally, I would feel more stressful if I don't know how much time I have left. 
So for me, I would keep the timer on all the time. Next, one of the biggest changes coming to the new SAT is that there is a built-in graphing calculator within the testing app. So for the test, you can choose to bring in your graphing calculator like TI-84. However, if you don't have one or if you forgot to bring one, you can turn on this on-screen calculator feature and use it whether for calculations or graphing or other purposes. Next, like the current SAT, there's an option for you to see a reference sheet. On this reference sheet, you can see common formulas like the area of a circle, area of rectangle, volume of a sphere, and so on. However, I find some of these formulas quite useless. Sure, you may not remember exactly the volume of a sphere or a pyramid. However, if you need to refer back to this reference sheet to see the formula to find the area of a circle or the Pythagorean theorem, then I feel like you're not really well prepared for the SAT test. Anyway, let's move on. The next testing tools is kind of cool. On the top right corner of the question, there's a bookmark icon, and if you click on it, you can mark this question. This is a very convenient feature because you can mark the questions that you want to come back later, and being able to add a mark prevents you from forgetting to come back to this particular question. In addition to adding marks, you can also add annotations. During the test, if you click on the annotate button in the top menu, you will be able to write down notes like you would on a scrap paper. College Board hasn't shown us how the annotation screen looks like, so we're not sure whether annotation means typing down text, or it also means that you can draw things with your cursor. But we will find out about this when College Board gives us more details. In the top right corner, there's also a help button where you can get additional help during the test. However, College Board says that if you need help during the test, you can also raise your hand and get help from the proctor or the technology coordinator at the testing site. Lastly, College Board says, and more. There are other tools that you will be able to use on the test, and we're speculating that there will be a highlighting feature for the reading passages, so you can highlight the passage if you want to. Whether that's true, we shall find out. Next, let's talk about the new digital SAT format. As we mentioned earlier, the new SAT has two sections, and the first of which is the reading and writing, which is also the English section. The reading and writing section contains only multiple choice questions, all of which has just one correct answer, like the current SAT. Instead of having long passages with many questions for one passage, the new SAT will have one short passage for each question. In addition, the reading passages will come from a broader range of college level texts. Here we're speculating that texts will also come from contemporary passages from economics, politics, finance, and the environment. We're also making another speculation that the grammar questions on the new SAT will cover almost all the current grammar topics. That means topics like punctuation marks, verbs, and so on. So if you're already studying for the current SAT, you can use those knowledge on the new digital SAT. Even though College Board has not released how the reading and writing section will look like, we're speculating that the test will have a two-column layout. We're making the speculation because when we take a look at the math questions, we see 11 right, two-column layout. At the inside corner, there are these buttons that allow you to expand one column into full screen. Just like the current SAT, the digital SAT will also have questions with graphs and tables. And these are the questions where you have to understand and analyze the graphs and tables, and maybe making connections between the graphs and tables with the text. As we mentioned earlier, all tests are unique, so students from the same test day from the test center will still have different questions on the test. College Board hasn't announced whether students will get points off for wrong answers. We're guessing that the new SAT will be the same as the current SAT where there will be no penalty for wrong answers. Marking questions and other tools like annotation will be available. So for example, if you're doing a question and you want to mark it and come back later, you can click on the bookmark icon. There are two crucial questions that are left to be answered. First of which is, are the reading and grammar questions all mixed and combined together in one big section, or do the students finish one part and then do the other? Lastly, the timer on the screenshot shows 32 minutes. So that gets us thinking, are there only 32 minutes for the entire reading and writing section? However, I'm guessing the section is longer, considering that there are only two sections, English and math, and the entire test takes up two hours, then maybe the entire reading and writing section should take about one hour, 
and not only 32 minutes. Next, let's move on to the breaks in between sections. You're given one break between the sections and there's a timer on the screen to show you how much time you have left in the break. Based on this screenshot from College Board, we're guessing that this break in between is a 10 minute break. Even though College Board hasn't explicitly say this, break time may happen at different times for different students because if you look at the first line of the instructions, it says do not disturb students who are still testing. That can either because students started the test at different times or because there are potential technical issues during the test that made some students finish the test slower than the other students. So we don't know whether that means tests can begin at different times for everyone, although that may seem unlikely as the testing room may seem a little chaotic as students come in and out all the time. While reviewing all the information we have for the new SAT, we realize something very intriguing. In the instructions, it says, testing won't resume until you return. However, on the left side of the screen, there's also a remaining break time timer. So what does that mean? If the timer is up and you're still in the bathroom, it seems like the test will not automatically start the next section. However, if that's the case, then what is the point of having a remaining break time countdown? Hmm, interesting. Lastly, are the break rules and common sense are the same as usual, including during the break, you should not access your phone, textbook, notes, or the internet. You should not eat and drink inside the classroom. Don't speak to others because you might cheat, and so on and so forth. Speaking of a break, let's take a very, very short break as I invite you to subscribe to our channel and click like to this video if you find this video somewhat useful so far. We'll be sharing a lot more about the SAT test and the whole college admissions process, and you definitely don't want to miss out on any of this. All right, let's get back to section two, math, and let's talk about multiple choice questions first. Just like the current SAT, there are multiple choice questions with four choices and students have to choose one correct answer. Based on the screenshot from the College Board, we're speculating that the multiple choice question section will be 35 minutes with 30 questions. This sounds about right, as it's about half an hour, and students get a little bit more than a minute to do each question. As we mentioned earlier, calculators are allowed for the entire test, and there is this built-in graphing calculator available for the students who don't have or don't want or forgot to bring a calculator. Many students and teachers are already using this online graphing calculator from Desmos. So I'm sure this calculator will be easy for many students to use during the test. As we review all the information that's out there for the new SAT, and specifically as we look at this particular screenshot of the test, we're speculating that the new SAT will have more math topics included. If you look at this screenshot, you will see limits. And limits is taught in pre-calculus. So our speculation here is that for the new SAT, you have to understand concepts from algebra, geometry, and pre-calculus to do well on the test. If this change is true, this could be slightly difficult for some students who don't get to take pre-calculus class until they're in 12th grade. Lastly, as we mentioned earlier, there is this reference sheet available. However, most of the formulas on it are pretty useless. The second part to section two is the student produced responses. And these are almost like the grid in questions on the current SAT. What's the same with the current grid in questions is that the answers contain whole numbers, decimals, or fractions. But what's new on the digital SAT is that the answers can now contain negative numbers. Students can type in up to five or six digits or symbols for each question. If the answer is positive number, you can type in up to five digits or symbols like 1.234. And if it's a negative number, you can type in up to six digits or symbols, like negative 1.234. And lastly, we're making another speculation here that this student produced responses section will be 35 minutes and 20 questions. This also makes a lot of sense because that means the entire math section adds up to 70 minutes, just over an hour. And also these students produce response questions can be a little bit harder than the multiple choice questions so you're given only 20 questions instead of 30. Now that you know everything about the new digital SAT test so far, let's talk about how to prepare for the new digital SAT. At some point, College Board will, of course, release a lot more information about the test for you to prepare for it. 
If you're feeling eager or worried about the new SAT and you want to prepare ahead for the digital SAT, then you can follow our recommendation. For the grammar questions in the English section, you can continue with your preparation for the current SAT. That means for topics like fragment and run-on, agreements, punctuation mark, verb tense, and so on, these basic grammar concepts will for sure be tested on the new SAT, and you can start preparing for these concepts right now. Next, if you want to prepare ahead for the reading section, then you can, well, just read. Even though there may be some tips and tricks for the SAT reading comprehension questions, if you just continue to read, really anything could be novels, could be magazines, could be articles online. Anything that you read right now in English will help you drastically when you are doing any kind of reading comprehension. And this isn't just true for the SAT, this is true for the ACT, for TOEFL, for IELTS, for a state reading test, or for the reading test in your English class. As long as you develop a habit of reading, you'll do fine with the reading comprehension questions. If you're feeling particularly weak with vocabulary, then you can do one or two things. You can either read, or you can memorize. Reading is the slower but the more fun way to do it, whereas memorizing vocabulary is the faster but the much boring way to do it. But for sure you have to either read or memorize, otherwise there is no way for you to know these words that you don't know. And here we recommend a free tool that you can use to memorize vocabulary, and that is the flashcards web app that we built on our website. The direct link is ivy-white.com slash flashcards, or you can scan this QR code on the screen. We developed this flashcard app with the goal to help you remember these words quicker and retain these words longer in your memory. If you're interested, we'd love to have you give it a try and let us know what you think. Lastly, if you want to prepare for the math section, as long as you remember or review everything from the school curriculum, you will for sure do fine on the SAT. And lastly, here are some learning and practicing resources for the digital SAT. If you don't already know, Khan Academy is a great free resource for you to learn almost everything from 1st grade to 12th grade and beyond. Khan Academy will continue to partner with College Board to offer students free lessons and practices and practice tests. The practices for the digital SAT is not there yet, but we're guessing maybe by March or May and definitely before the summer you will be able to go on to Khan Academy and do these practices. Next, on our IVWay YouTube channel, we will be putting up a lot more information and resources and lessons about the new digital SAT, so be sure to follow us, subscribe, and stay updated. In addition, starting the summer of 2022, IVWay Academy will be offering SAT both online and in-person courses to help you prepare for the digital SAT, so stay tuned on that. As you know, this is the very, very early stages of the digital SAT, and there aren't currently a lot of information about this new test. College Board's official website, satsuite.collegeboard.org slash digital, will have more information in the days to come. Next, we want to make one last shameless plug to invite you to follow our YouTube channel. I decided to make this video because I feel like there is not enough information from the College Board itself to tell you more about the SAT, and in the future, we would love to do that. So if you follow us, you will be able to get this information firsthand. But if you're the reading type of person, then you can head over to our Ivy Way blog, blog.ivy-way.com, where we have information and resources about high school, test prep, college application, college life, AP, scholarship opportunities, internship opportunities, interview tips and tricks, and a lot more. Finally, I'm very curious to hear your thoughts on the new digital SAT. Based on everything we know about the digital SAT so far, what are some features that you like about the new test? Please let us know in the comments below. I hope you find this video helpful. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Alex Chang from IVO Academy, and hopefully I will see you next time. Peace.